we have over here? Okay. How many do we have? We have seven here. And yep. we got probably seven inches. Well, actually, it's probably four because we've got you, us, and not them. Okay, so. cool. Awesome. Well, so good to be with you guys. Um, how much time do I have? Um, well, I have small group coaching at two, and I think most of you guys are here. So. Okay. Okay, so at least just until go, two. Just, yeah, just start talking, man. Okay, so um, make sure to stay right there. Okay, so the, 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 the deliverable that I want to offer to you guys today is at the end of this is that you, number one, have a paradigm shift on where business can come from, okay? And then number two, have some very tactical strategies on how to go start building relationships that will give you not just one or two referrals, but we'll give you lots of referrals. Okay. Uh, anybody opposed to that? Anybody does that sound like a terrible thing? Lots of warm referrals coming in. Okay. Um, so should, you guys should have received, and if not, I'll nudge Kareem to give to you a copy of my book, The Upstream Model. Did anybody here get that? No, okay. Did. You did. Okay. Yeah. So if you don't have it at the end of this, Kareem has a stack of them that Dwight purchased for the new agents. So um, if, you, if, he's, if he's run out, let me know. We'll get you guys some more. So I love this office, and, and so we're. We, Did you autograph them? No, I, I can. I still not, <laughs> I'm still not convinced I'll add any value to it, but I'm happy to. <laughs> That's important to you guys. I'm happy to. Value. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know about that, but anyway. Um, so let's just start by kind of sharing this paradigm shift. Let's hit the lights a little bit so you guys can actually see that. Can someone yeah, grab that? Is, uh, close me back there. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. So for those that are online, what do you, in fact, and, and not just those that are online, but for those that are here, what do you see here? What does, like, what are you looking at? Bubble, bagel, and plain eggs. Okay, great. So lots of plain eggs yeah. and one golden egg, okay? Now, you could create all kinds of different analogies with what this means. Um, but I want to use that golden egg being a commission check, okay? Like a deal that actually closes, yeah. okay? Now, would you all agree that everybody you talk to is not going to be a golden egg? Yeah. It's not going to turn into a commission. We know that, right? And so what ends up happening is that there's lots of plain eggs that you're sorting and sifting through in order to find that client that turns into a closing, right? A commission, okay? And what traditional business models teach you, and I'm not against them, I use them myself, is that, in fact, for those of you that are here, you'll be able to see this. If I you probably won't be able to see that in here. But. Okay. Okay. So what traditional models teach you is that it's simply a numbers game. You guys have heard that before? It's just a numbers game. Go talk to a lot of people. And in that, in that lot of people conversations, you'll find a few people that will either do business with you or will refer you. Okay. Now, again, I use this, I use the, that model in different ways in my own business. So I'm not downing it. It's the reality of how business works, okay? Is that lots of people and you're sorting through lots of people. Now let's compare this to real estate, specifically what this could look like for you, which is, uh, in fact, let me just hear some of the ways that you are actively working to get business right now. Like what are some of the methods? Go ahead. Social media marketing. Okay, great. So would you agree there's a lot of people on social media and you're hoping that somebody that you find that golden egg, right? Yeah. Okay, great. What are some other ones? Open houses. Open houses. Okay, great. You get a lot of people through the door, right? Or a lot of people even that see the fact that you're doing open house. Fewer of them turn into a golden egg, right? Okay, great. What else? I'm sorry. I, That's great. Don't apologize. I worked at an apartment complex. I'm using there. I emailed okay. like 120 people and I got like 50 people back saying to keep in touch and that's the password is so long. Well done. Awesome. Thank okay. You. I might even argue that what you did right there is more aligned with the model I'm going to teach you guys. So brilliant move. Um, but still, same concept, right? Big database, and in there, you're going to find some people that do business with you, okay? Who else has an idea, whether you've done it or you're going to be doing it, of a way to generate business for your business? Contacting your sphere. Personal sphere. Okay, good. Would you agree? Again, it's big personal sphere. And from that personal sphere, you'll find some people that will do business with you directly, others that will do that and or refer you, right? Okay. What else? Postcards. Okay. Postcards. Okay. Great. Sending out to a neighborhood, right? 
How many, how many postcards are you going to send out on a given month? Would you say? Okay. Thousand, whatever you can. Okay. Do. Perfect. Okay. Let's say you send out a thousand, let's just say 500 of that 500 odds are you'll get a couple of people that will be interested that will respond back that will turn into potential. Okay. So in other words, what we're saying here, sorry, okay. you got big number of database and from that comes a small number of referrals. Okay. Big database, small number of referrals. What if, what if you could have a small database of people that gave you a lot of referrals? Who would opt for option B over option A? Right? Okay, how do we do that? Okay, that was the whole topic of, of, of my book and what we're gonna be discussing today. Let's see if I can get this to move. There we go, okay. Okay, so again, traditional models for those that um, are seen online, you'll be able to see this maybe better than those here. Again, big database, it takes a lot of work, right? From sorting through your personal sphere, social media, right? Open houses, uh, the neighborhood, a, a lot of work and expense, right? We're spending money, we're spending our time in order to find those golden eggs, okay? A little bit of delay here. There we go. Okay. Let me tell you a story about when I was a high-end home builder years ago. Uh, I lived in a different state and I was um, building high-end custom homes for a luxury home builder. I was his project manager. Learned how to, how to build a business, learned how to build homes. And pretty soon his site started to get really interested in land development. So he was like, I want to go all in on land development. You run this side of my business. And there came a point where his heart really wasn't in this business. And I made him an offer to say, can I buy this portion of your business and make it my own? And he agreed, we agreed upon a price and he pursued land development. I pursued the high-end custom home business. By that point, all the clients knew me, they didn't even know him anymore. So it wasn't that hard a transition. And I had my, my own license, my own company, felt like a big boy, right? I'm gonna start my own company. I'm like, I've got the suppliers, I've got the subcontractors, I've got the knowledge. Um, or I'm gaining the not, a lot of knowledge, right? Like I didn't know everything, but I knew enough. And I thought, okay, this is like, he made it look pretty easy to go get clients. I'm in. Anybody here feel like that when you're getting your real estate license where it was like, you know, I think I can do this. I think I can do this. I've seen HGTV. I see what they do. <laughs> I've seen other realtors. I'm probably smarter than some of them, right? I had a realtor, I had a good experience or a bad experience. Like I can either do what they did or do better than what they did. Anybody here got in the business because of that? Like, man, it seems like they're cashing some big checks, right? How do I, like, I got this, right? And then me as a home builder got into the business, you guys as a realtor got into the business, and it was like, all right, I'm ready. Customers, I'm ready, right? And it's like, wait a minute, why aren't they all running me? Like, what's the deal? Don't they know I'm a realtor, right? And then we learned that, you know, at that time I realized how many other builders were established in the area where I was building? So I become more aware of these things, right? And you guys start to realize like, wait, every person on average knows about 12 real estate agents. That was a survey done years ago. It's like, oh, so they already probably, they, they maybe know somebody, right? Well, that's okay. So I started like have these internal fears. I'm like, holy crap. Once I get a client, I'm going to treat them like gold. Like they're going to love me. I'm going to love them. Nobody's going to treat them better. But I was like, but how do I get the client? This is a hob, like there's two businesses. One business is I've got to serve the clients really well, confident I can do that. But this other business that I really wasn't as clear on how hard it would be is that I've got to actually get the client. And if business A of getting the client doesn't succeed, business B never gets a chance to succeed, right? With, doesn't matter how good of my world-class services over here, if I have no clients to implement that into, it doesn't really matter, right? I'd be amazing with clients. If I don't have any clients, there's a problem, right? So we have to figure out how to get the clients. That was me. And you can see from this image down here, for those of you that are online, you'll see this, uh, this guy down here on the outside of the stream. So imagine that this stream is filled with or has some clients in it, some perspective. For me, there were people wanting to build a home. For you guys, it's people that want to buy or sell a home, okay? And they're coming down this stream and I started to realize as a home builder is that there were a lot of other builders that already had their, their so to speak, their, their lines in the water. Like their fishing poles were in the water, 
right? Not only that, but they kind of had their spot along the bank kind of blocked out, right? Like they got the chair set up, they got their like fishing poles all set up over here. And it's like, that's a good fishing hole right there, but I can't really get in that because this guy's is kind of already there, right? And for me as a home builder, that was in the form of people who have had deep established relationships. They had billboards along the freeway saying how good they were. They had full communities, right? And you guys, have, has anybody felt that way of like, oh my goodness, like these other realtors, they kind of own that neighborhood or they've got these personal relationships or they've got, right? We start to get like have that negative self-talk in our head of like, man, I think I'm late to the party. Like I've got my fishing pole. I'm ready to go. I can't even get the dang thing in the water, right? Because I feel like everyone's got everything blocked out. And I'm trying to figure out like, okay, how do I go about doing this? How, how do I get business? And I noticed that there was somebody who was upstream from a home building transaction who had all the clients and it was architectural designers. As a home builder, they dealt with the client before I could deal with the client, okay? And I was like, huh, that architect knows people who he knows they're going to build a home. He's designing the plans for them, but those people haven't selected a builder yet. Ah, I got an idea. I'm gonna walk upstream, introduce myself to the architect, and he's gonna start to give me referrals to these clients so that I can get out of this competitive mess down here. Great idea. That idea changed my life. And I've seen it change other people's lives. However, the way I first approached that architect was no bueno. I showed up as a solicitor, as a vendor. I identified somebody that could help me, a golden goose, if you will, who had lots of golden eggs, but I couldn't figure out how to necessarily get him to give them to me, right? And it's because of how I showed up. When I first showed up, it was like, I'm Justin. I own a company called Evergreen Custom and I build a great home. And here's some of my cards. Here's some of my brochures. Uh, I'd love to be, I'd love to build some of the homes that you design, right? Like it was maybe a little better than that, but not much. And I just interrupted him from the work that he had done. And so he was like, okay, thanks. I appreciate that. I could tell I was emotionally intelligent enough to think like, hey, this is a good idea. But I was emotionally ignorant enough to know like this didn't go real well. Like my first impression with him is like, hey, why don't uh, you sell me? Because I'm having a hard time selling myself. So if you could sell me, I'm not going to pay you anything. But here's a whole stack of my cards. Please pass these out to all your clients and send me the referrals. Okay, great, thanks. I was like, if I was on the other end of that, I would take those cards as soon as you round the corner. I'd be like, where's the trash can? Thanks for interrupting me, dude. Right? And so I had this challenge of, of, of figuring out how to approach that upstream partner in a way that would make them want to give me business and referrals before that person ever got into the competitive pool with all my competition, right? So that process is, is kind of what I learned and, and, and some things that I want to share with you today as to what I learned and some first steps that you can do to where rather than having that big database Right now, you'll still have that. I'm not saying don't do open house. I'm not saying don't do your sphere. All that stuff makes total sense. But in addition to that, I would encourage you to pay close attention to this model is there are some people in this community, some people outside these doors, some people you already know who are able to help you a lot more than other people. Just like an architect was way more able to help me as a home builder than my friends who were also 25 and didn't have any million dollar home referrals for me, go figure. Don't know why I didn't see that ahead of time. Uh, but anyway, there are some people here that if you identify them and approach them properly and offer enough value to them, they will be in a position to send you not just a little bit of referrals, a lot of referrals, okay? So why does this, why does this work? What's the difference between having like a why wouldn't I have just a little tiny sphere then? It's just, if the goal is to have a small database, it gets a lot of pearls. Well, because the key with an upstream partner, it's not that they know you, like you, trust you, and want to refer you because they want to support you, right? Or that they had a good experience with you. 
People like that are good and great, and you ought to cultivate those 100%. However, the average consumer doesn't think about real estate as often as you guys do, right? It consumes you. It's in your mind all the time. So do you, you drive down a street, you see every single real estate sign there is. You think to yourself, I knew those people, or I could have sold that house, right? Uh, or like, man, I missed out on that one, right? So you see all that. The people in this big database don't. They think about their job and their family and their work and their life, and they don't see life through the same as that glasses, but through the same lenses that you do. So naturally, they're not going to have as many opportunities to refer you as you would hope that they would, right? I've talked to agents um, for a number of years saying like, your very best referral partners from this normal database, how many referrals would you say you get from them? Oh, we get like a referral every year, sometimes a couple a year. And it's like, that's awesome. But that's, that's a really good client. But what if, some of you know Bruce Hardy, does that name sound familiar? He oversees the Northwest region of Keller Williams for the Northwest. And um, when I was explaining this concept to him, he was like, he's like, what I teach my agents, I say, who do you have to be and who do you have to know to where you can get like 25 referrals or 50 referrals in a year from one person? Like who is the person? And then who do you have to become to merit that kind of business flow? And I was like, yes, we're thinking the same way. And because there are people, for me, it was an architect. For you guys, it might be somebody different. Let's talk about who that is. In fact, let me just share a couple other slides here really quickly. So for real estate now, this is what this might look like, right? You've got agents that are down here. Some of them are working their big, big database of personal sphere, right? You've got others that are doing open house, others that are doing geographical farm. You notice there's a little bit of frustration on the face, right? That's not all of them, but it's right, for effect. Um, and, so, and some of them are doing a little bit of all of it, which is a good idea to, to choose a, you know, several. Um, you notice that, and maybe some of you feel this way, is that there's more lines in the water than there are fish at the moment, right? More realtors than listings, you heard that stat, okay? It's like, well, who's gonna get the fish? Well, it's the, the person who, that's most aggressive, right? It's got the, the, the salesiest tactics, hope not, right? That's not always the best realtor for them. And that may not describe you, right? So. How do you then get out of this competitive, what I call kind of the bloody water, right? Where it's like just like a feast, right? Where they're or a, a, a famine rather, but they're feasting on each other almost, right? How do you get up here to where you become the upstream agent, where you are getting information about who these people are before those people are ever known to these people, right? Before Zillow can ever turn them into a lead. That's pretty early, right? Before other agents are for sale by owner calling them, expired calling them, before anybody um, is in their sphere is identifying that they're a sphere. Who, who, who is the architect for real estate agents? Who is that person or those people that can cue you in to the fact that a real estate agent or the real estate transaction is coming before those people make it known to the world of we're looking for a realtor, okay? That's what we're gonna discuss with the rest. How do you find that golden goose that can give you the golden eggs? Okay. Again, that is the topic of the book. How do you get recurring referrals? Not one or two a year. That's good. I encourage you to go do what that creates. But in addition to that, how do you carve out a really special couple of people that are just flowing business through there? Okay. So I'm going to switch my screens now. If anybody has any questions here, I'd love to hear them. Um, while I switch my screen and anybody here in chat, if you have anything that I can answer, some of it will probably be um, answered as I continue on. Now, keep in mind, I don't, we won't be able to go through all of this today. I've got a um, 21 module course that teaches kind of the deep dive on this. So, of course, I, I won't be able to go through all of that, but I do have the ability to at least answer answer questions. So again, if anybody has questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll I'll look at them and try and get them answered. Um, I want to share a different screen here. Let me pull this up here. Give me just a sec. I'm going to give you some ideas on where to start. 
okay, on where you can begin to look for these upstream partners. And we're gonna talk about your ideas because I definitely have not uncovered all of them. I've uncovered some of them, but there's more. Cool. Um, it, right. Well, conversely, so in the downstream model, right? So we're not talking about that, but in the downstream model, who gets the fish? We ask the question, who gets the fish? Who gets the fish? The fish with the best bait in the, in the best spot, yeah. right? That's hard to predict. Yeah, because the upper guy was fishing with the net versus the fishing rod. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great point, right? Where we've got the best spot, the best bait, most amount of people with their lines in the water, right? And, and, and then, but it's a convergence of time and of bait and time and place, yeah. right? And it's like, it's, it's not as, it's, a fisherman might tell you it's science, but there's a lot of work that goes through it. Yeah. So at first, this won't apply to you guys as much because you're new agents, okay? But how do you, the, the big question to begin with is how do I find my first upstream partners? Where are they going to come from? Now, for anyone that's experienced in the business, you'd say, well, from whom have I already gotten re multiple referrals? That's maybe a professional partner, right? That's not just an average consumer, but I'm looking for people who, whose current clients are my potential future clients. Because again, the average person that walks outside of their house and they work at Intel for a living and they're going about their day and their kids are in soccer, they might, somebody might say real estate and they'd be like, oh, yeah, totally is like I got the perfect realtor for it, right? Like that's why they only do one or two a year because just because their day is filled up with things that have nothing to do with real estate. Okay. But who are the people who's in the course of their work, they're uncovering the fact, or maybe one or two questions away from uncovering the fact that these people are going to need a realtor. Okay. That's how we start to find who are our upstream partners. Who are the people that we're going to target to be in that small database that we would then be able to really approach, right? And, and the, the, uh, how to approach is a whole different topic, right? So we can circle back on that. In fact, next week I'm doing a three-day intensive training, which I'll go deeper on this and, and you all be invited to it, it's free. Um, but this first concept is how do I find who it might be, right? Now, what was your name? Kate. Kate, I actually loved your idea. Let's, let's actually start with that one because from what professional partner am I already getting regular referrals? Now, the fact that your previous job, you oversaw a partner building, right? Correct. And so you knew the fact that these people would probably, most of them would want a house, right? Mm -hmm. I would guess. Now, some people maybe are renting for strategic purposes or whatever, but I, I would say if most of them, if you went to them and say, would you rather be paying your own mortgage or this rent? They'd probably say my own mortgage, right? And I think most of them that come in just to break their lease later look for a home. Okay, yeah. So the fact that you had, had identified your former role was actually like kind of an upstream position, right? You were in, in the example of the river, which I've removed, but let's go back to that concept here. For those that are online, I'll the picture again, right? But if you've got this stream here, right? You guys are down here currently. I'm teaching you to do differently, right? But like, who is sitting up here? Who is the person who's, again, their current clients that they're dealing with are going to need you next? The fact that there's people that actually do what you did is interesting. Now, the conflict of interest yeah. is that if they are no longer renting to, to get you a customer, they lose a customer, right? So the fact that you're... I don't know that it'd be a good idea to go find someone that's in that role, yeah. right? Unless, of course, people came to them to say, hey, look, we're going to be breaking our lease because we're going to be moving in the next six months. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. They're not encouraging them to do it. But then that person would say, uh, we're so sorry to hear that. Um, do you have a good realtor, right? Yeah. 
Now, how you incentivize them to do that is another conversation. But the fact that, imagine if you were in that role and somebody came to you and offered such value for what for, for something in your business or your life, where you're like, I'll totally refer you. Because I've got people that come to me, say they're bringing their lease, and I can simply ask the question, do you already have a, like a really good realtor that you're working with? Because I know somebody that's really great. Like that would be pretty cool, right? So that's a potential when I ask this question from what professional part your partner am I already getting regular referrals? That may be the closest in the room that, you know, that, that we have. Unless, correct me if I'm wrong, but has anybody here gotten a referral or multiple referrals from any professional partner to date? Okay, great. So let's think through then. Okay, so, so that'd be where you normally start, right? And I think that was a great example of a potential, right? Um, yeah, and then, okay, so the next question then is, to what professional partner would I like to refer regularly? Because this whole conversation of you walking up here and not having it look like my first conversation with the architect, which, which was less efficient, right? It was, didn't actually work. The idea was okay, but my execution was poor because I went in asking what he can do for me, right? Um, and the way I introduced it was, I was like cold calling into his office. Again, not how you want to approach that. But this, how do you approach that person, right? Becomes a question, or who is the person you want to approach? I was thinking, like, the first way you could get into that, like, if I hadn't been in the apartment complex for four years and all those people, a good way you could do is, you know, you have a buyer or a seller, sorry, a seller that wants to go into an apartment, you're selling their home, you can refer them to that apartment complex. Cool. You're helping each other your business. Yeah, great ideas, right? Okay, good. So you're already thinking that way of what are the biggest concerns that my upstream partner may have? And how do I become a solution to that? I had a, um, so I didn't mention this before, but I'll mention it now. I probably should have. Um, I actually work for Old Republic Title Company. So we're a title and escrow company, right? Um, I don't do the title work. I've got great title and escrow officers that are doing that while I'm here with you guys. Um, so if you love what we're talking about here and want to do business with us, like let's talk. Um, but the thing that, that is interesting is um, my role is to help you guys get more business so you can close more at our company, right? To kind of see the, um, in the process of kind of uncovering this um, model, we have to ask ourselves the following question, which is, as a real estate agent, what are the needs of my clients that I can't solve? It's not what I do for a living, but they would be really well served if I were to have a good referral to a blank, that would be a great starting place. Because this conversation of you having talking to this person gets easier if you're going to them saying, I want to be able to refer all my applicable clients to somebody that does what you do. And I'm simply interviewing to see who might be the right fit, right? Now again, you're coming in to give, not coming in to get, which is exactly the, you know, the, the relationship you want to have. So again, going back to who are my first upstream partners? Going back, who is this person that I'm going to focus on that I'm going to start with? It's who might I want to integrate into my business? Oh, I know where I was going before that. So my first big client as in the title and escrow industry, again, because I apply the same model to my business right now, um, he gave me this clue. He said, Justin, I like what you're doing here. Here's a tip. In fact, he was just calling me when I pulled in. Still my client. But he said, if you want my business, become a part of my business. If you become a part of my business, naturally, we'll, it'll be so natural for us to send you our title and escrow business. So you have to think about, okay, if the, key, if the clue is, I, I can't just be present always in their office. Um, who, how do I get integrated into their business? And the, the opposite of, not opposite of that, but, but the complementary question to that is, who do I want to integrate into my business? Who are the other professionals that would be really valuable for my clients to have access to during the transaction? Okay. So I'm going to go through that, some ideas right now. Okay. So I've really divided these up into two kind of categories, right? Kind of a, a financial services, you might consider kind of like a, like a white color crowd, right? 
work with their with their with their minds. And then you've got the like the blue collar crowd, like home services that maybe work more with their hands. Okay. So here's some ideas of some some upstream partners that people with whom people have had success in the past. When I, when I coach and help people to install this system in their business, this is oftentimes some of the early starting places, okay? So let's talk about how might a financial advisor, how might they be upstream? Like how would they know that a real estate transaction is coming in the life of their clients? Can anybody picture that? What that might look like? Okay, go ahead. If they're coming to them, asking them, they can afford a home. Okay. Straightforward. Awesome. Yeah. Good. Any other thoughts? How else might that come up? Because they're not a realtor, they're not going to ask real estate. But do you see the relevance and maybe how a financial advisor might? I love it because sometimes they'll say like, do you think we can afford it? Is this a good idea, right? Or like a financial advisor, if they know that you want business, might bring it up to them. And be like, well, we thought about buying a home, but they might like over finances and they're renting, and they're like, you could do this. Stuff good. And then bring up your name. Love it. So both of those are 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 very valid. Here's the thing that I found where this works. Um, is that when a financial advisor has regular meetings with his clients. So again, in order for us to be relevant in their life to where they're not doing it because they know us, like us, trust us, and want to help us out, that relationship is where you get a couple referrals now and again. But where you get a steady stream of referrals, where it's like a flow of referrals, it's where you're solving a problem for them. And they actually want to get you in front of their clients. They're like, oh, yeah, would you please come stand right here? Because I want everybody to, to contact you. Why? Not because I like you. We're like, yeah, I like you. But I'm doing it because it's good for my clients. It's good for my business. Okay, so we have to think to ourselves then, what is their challenge? What are they struggling with? Just like in order to serve someone in real estate, you have to understand what is their problem? What is their challenge? So you could solve it, right? Where do you want to live? How much can you afford? How do I find you a house? You're thinking that way, right? And that's how you solve your client's problems. Now, I want you to consider this person is now your client. They're your most valuable client. And the same questions apply, like what, like, what do they need? What are their challenges? Okay, and I'll tell you, I interviewed over a dozen of them when I was writing the book. And here's what they said, is that our major goal is to be at the, at the center of all things financial for our clients. So whether it's real estate, whether they're buying a car, whether they're paying for college, whether they're saving, investing, whatever, we just want to be at the center of that conversation because they came to us and said, we are here. We want to be there financially. Can you help us? I put together a plan for them and I got to keep them on plan because I succeed when they succeed. And by the way, I earn money when they invest with me, right? So how do they keep that client from buying a $130,000 boat instead of keeping the money in their investments. Well, they are in regular contact with them, okay? And they're at the center of all things financial. How do they do that? Again, they have annual reviews with their clients, okay? So they meet with their clients annually to say, let's do a, a review to see how things are going. Are we on plan? What do we need to adjust? Is your retirement date still roughly at this point in the future? Let's see how things are performing. What do we need to tweak and adjust in order to get you from here to there? Okay. So that's the conversation that they're wanting to have. Now, one of the things that they struggle with is the fact that some clients are leery of those meetings because they feel like if we're going to have a meeting with a financial advisor, he's just going to want to sell us more products and tell us we shouldn't have that $130,000 boat. And, he, and they're going to tell us that maybe we um, should invest more and spend less and or he's going to tell us we need to buy more insurance, right? Kind of that, that stereotype, just like you guys want to sell their home, right? Well, our financial advisor just wants to always sell us more insurance, sell us more insurance, right? Well, of course, good for that. So that's the stigma that they're fighting, okay? So how do they fight that best? Well, it's when they sit down with their clients, they're talking about not just their money that they're making money on, their investments, but they're also talking about their entire portfolio, so imagine if you were a financial advisor and that was what you were fighting is how do I keep people on plan and how do I give them uh, this belief that authentically I'm here to serve them, not just to, to sell them more financial products. Okay. So one way, imagine again that I'm your financial advisor and we sit down, you meet Kate, and we're doing an annual review. And I say, Kate, 
excited to review how this past year has gone. Um, before we get started, I just want to double check. Um, you're still living at this address, I'm assuming. All right. And you, you guys still own these couple of, uh, of, of investment properties. I hadn't heard otherwise, so I assume yes. Um, I actually had a partner of mine put together an, an, an unsolicited comparative market analysis for you so that you can have um, kind of an update as to what your properties are worth and if it's a good idea to, to continue in them, right? So at the very moment that this person is trying to add value, we see this more than just an, ins an insurance salesperson, but at the center of all things financial, you've given him very customized, sorry, friends at home, um, a very customized uh, snapshot of their real estate portfolio. And in that moment, you've made that financial advisor more valuable because now he's able to talk about more things than just the money that he's getting paid on. He's able to talk about all things financial, which is his goal. Now, was that difficult for you? Probably not. Probably took 10 minutes per property, right? To do like a quick comparative market analysis. And what happened when that client says, you know, those rental properties, it's getting hard to be a landlord in Oregon. I don't know that we want to do it anymore. I think we're thinking about selling those and maybe getting that vacation home we always want. But that was the way to take it deeper than just, oh, we still have them, all right, cool. Like, exactly. You, you go, oh, how are they going? Though? Yeah, exactly. Because what happens, what you, what you want to train that financial advisor to do is to add more value. Just like big tech Zillow and Redfin are aiming at you guys, they've got Robinhood and Vanguard and big tech companies aiming at them. Just like you guys are working to be more valuable to your clients, so are they, so they don't get pushed out by tech, okay? So you're helping them by giving them more knowledge from a space that they don't even really deal with directly, which is real estate, okay? So by doing that, and for you, it was simply like deliver the CMA to them. Now in the middle of that conversation, when the client says, you know, we're actually thinking about downsizing and selling those rental properties. Now the financial advisor, if you've given him enough value, he'll say, now you probably know a realtor or a handful of them. Um, might I recommend someone who was really impressed me that's more like a, a wealth advisor for your real estate as opposed to just another realtor? That would get their attention. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, yeah, we know realtors. We thought the one we used last was pretty good. Um, great. I, you know, here's somebody that you probably ought to maybe at least have a conversation with, right? Imagine that financial advisor in every one of his annual meetings. Now, he has hundreds of clients, right? So where he's, he's looking for those opportunities to bring you in because you helped him to be so much more valuable. Now you're getting a shot at the very moment that he's uncovering the fact that that client needs a realtor long before any of these agents down here even know, right? They haven't talked to a realtor yet, most likely. You're getting access to those clients before they ever come down into here, right? So that's, that's an idea of a financial advisor, okay? Let me share a couple others. This same principle applies with each of them, not necessarily your direct provided CMA. That was just an idea, right? Um, and, and none of these are, this is the only way to do it, right? The goal is who is the upstream partner? What is their biggest challenge? How do I solve that and get integrated into their client experience to where I come up in every conversation? I don't know if you listen to Earl Nightingale, but that's like exactly what he talks about is you're not trying to sell yourself because that was a salesman, you're trying to solve a problem. Yeah. Love that. I have Earl Lang. Yeah. What was the name of his book? The, um, I, I know he had several. I listened to his two hours. I think on YouTube every morning. Okay. He's like 1970 something. Yeah. Or older, right? I think he's like yeah. early 1900s, maybe 1800s. Yeah. Some classics. I think he's more than like he's from, like, he's from like, he's from like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's I think it was like early 1900s that he was. Yeah, it was amazing. It's like this old radio voice. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. That's hilarious. That just reminded me what you said. So, any, so, so again, in this white collar crowd here, it's anybody who has the practice or would benefit from the practice of consulting with their clients and finding ways to add more value, right? So, financial advisor, yeah. Mortgage loan officer, yeah. Right? Property and casualty insurance agent, yeah. Right? These are all people that are meeting with their clients or they should be on a regular basis to maintain the relationship, to see what other opportunities there are to serve them at other levels. And if you could integrate yourself into their client experience, you would be in the conversation with a lot of people, right? CPAs, property managers, general contractors, others, okay? Again, this is not a comprehensive list. This is a start to a list. Okay, on this other side over here, okay? We've got 
painter. You might be like thinking a painter. No, that's great. How would a painter, don't, doesn't the realtor refer the painter after the home is like sold or like after they already have a realtor? Yes, but imagine this. Imagine if you were a painter and you were competing against people on Angie's list. Okay, now this is, I'm Justin the painter and I'm walking into a house and there's a couple other bids on the table and I'm bidding on it. And probably I better be a better price than that guy. Otherwise, I'm probably gonna be all right, just a painter, right? Like what's the big difference? Right? Maybe experience plays into it and reputation, how many stars I have on Angie's list matters. But imagine if I had this conversation with you. Kate, thanks for being such a willing participant today. Thank you. Right. So, um, so imagine this, if I said, Kate, super excited to be here to give you a bid on your house for the paint job. Um, quick question for you. Are you guys planning on living in this house for a long time? Or are you moving here in the next, or, or are you doing this because you're thinking about moving pretty soon? And what would be your answer? Let's just say. Five, seven, seven, seven. Perfect. Yeah. Now, why might like what would it matter? Like, how would that add value by me asking that question? Well, here's so imagine if me, the painter, I said, Kate, um, I would say if you're gonna live here for 10 years, I would say pick whatever colors you want because it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. But if you're gonna be moving the next little bit, would it be okay if I shared with you our clients' top choices of the most, uh, you know, the most popular paints over the past year? That way, when you're selling the house, you'll appeal to the like to the broadest right. audience. Would that be helpful, Kate? It would be. Now, would that cause me to stand out from other painters? Yeah. Would be like, man, I need that information, yeah. right? I'm gonna sell my house. He's telling me that I'm not gonna have to paint this thing again yeah. but what if, if I choose the wrong color. That didn't tell me that information. Right. Yeah. Because the person comes in and buys it and says, boy, I love the house, but that paint job's gotta go. So we're gonna we're gonna right like reduce down our bid or negotiate that into the contract, right? So now it's not longer Justin's price against Painter B's price. It's like Justin paid it once versus Painter B, maybe you have to pay it twice, right? So now all of a sudden, by you teaching the painter that conversation, you've made him more valuable. And in the process of him finding that that's valuable, right? They think, well, I'm actually moving in the next few months. Awesome, congratulations. You guys know where you're going yet? I'm not sure. We're just going to move out the country a little bit more. Um, do you guys have a, like a great realtor that you're working with? Like someone who's like the best, right? You can see how if you offer that painter enough value, he's just closing deals because you taught him how. Yeah. Now he's going to be interested in bringing you up, right? It might not be as, as polished as maybe what I described, but you can teach him over time. The more value you give them, the more you can train them to be your guy, right? It takes like, like 10 minutes to find out the information you provided. Totally. Yeah. Separated him from everybody else, okay? So that's how kind of the home services group works is that you're teaching them to not just be service providers, but to be consultants, right? Anytime you take a product versus a product and they're the same, the only difference is, well, who's less expensive, I guess, right? But if you take a product and layer on knowledge, information, now all of a sudden you can't compare them and it's like, that information is really good, I need that. So you're teaching these service providers how to be consultants. And P.S. While they're consulting, they're uncovering the fact that people need a realtor, right? So you're you you're identifying and training up a group of upstream partners. Like having a secret agent. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And they're loyal to you because you've taught them how to how to do this, right? Yeah. And 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 no one else has. If anybody's added value to them, it's been they've sent them referrals, which is cool. But I, I've talked to a lot of agents. I said, like, do you have a painter? They're like, well, yeah. I've been referring them for 15 years. Have you ever got a referral from them? Uh, like maybe once, have we? I don't know, I probably yeah. should, right? It's because they don't think that way. We don't think that way. It's like, why well, refer them? How can they refer me, right? Yeah. So. So run the business partners in that company. Right, yeah. Exactly what you do. You're creating business partners. You're helping them with their business. They're helping you with your business, okay? And in the process, you're helping each other differentiate from status quo, right? From being a commodity that's easily price searchable. So um, I think that's maybe a good stopping point. Oh, sorry. Um, again, I've got a free training going next week. Um, I'll send the link to Tony. Maybe you want to send it out to anybody that wants to participate in it. I don't have it to, like, okay. um, set up yet. Yeah. But it'll be three days of me going deeper on this. Uh, the concept of the model, how to identify the upstream partner, how to approach the upstream partner. Um, so it'll be helpful. It'll just be like an hour each of the three days. So pretty simple and fun. Um, any questions online? I don't know if anybody's asked any questions here. 
No, not yet. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Do we have any other questions that, that, that I can ask before I delve into a whole new segment that would take us a, a while? But um, at least to kind of wrap this up to where in your heads, I want you to be thinking, right? Like, okay, the concept of small database of that can give you lots of referrals. Who is this person? Basically, don't door knock, but don't go straight to the oh, absolutely. Like, go straight to the the higher people that you can talk to and network with the door off them. Yeah. Yeah, you want to be more. Yeah. Until you build that. Well, here's here's a, um, a prime example of me applying this model in my business, right? So I've got two businesses. One is my title and escrow business. One is I've, I've got a coaching and consulting business. And I've developed a course, as I mentioned, that goes deep into this. And I sell the course to people, right? One at a time, right? I talked to a broker, principal broker, in Casper, Wyoming, of all places. And he got interested in the concept, read the book. He's like, man, I would love to have my agents implement this into their business. And so we talked and like, he, he's interested in having 70 agents take that. I went to one person, convinced one person that this was the path forward for his agents, which is going to turn into up to 70 courses versus one at a time, right? Yeah. Like, and I like expanded my mind. I'm like, oh, that's the principle I teach applied to my business of selling the information. Uh, interesting, right? Yeah. So the, like, the, like everybody that's built a successful business at some point has implemented this, right? Who are the people that can help me the most? How do I add the most amount of value to them? And if you integrate it into their business, into their, into their problem, creating solutions for them so that they bring me into their conversations with their clients, right? Yeah, that's, that's like in a quick nutshell, but anyway, if we start to expand your mind of like what's possible here, right? Yeah, and that's, that's the same kind of thing that we're teaching you guys as far as your clients go as well, right? You sell a home, you help a buyer, you help a seller. What value can you continue to bring them to help them with all of their finances and their future and everything else to be able to have them share? Because then they'll have those conversations with other people and then they'll, well, who, who told you that, who realtor you did, and they'll bring you more business as well. Right? Right. Yeah, great point. It's all about value. Oh, finding the right person, adding the right amount of value. Great. I'm going to put um, here in the comments uh, if anybody is interested in the training I'm doing next week, I'll put it just in the Do you know what day and time chat here. Justin? I think it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 12 until 1. Okay. Is that bad timing? Oh, yeah, <laughs> they're. they're they're recorded and you can watch them later. So um, email me for more insight. I can give you a, a link <laughs> to some other helpful stuff that'd be helpful. So um, let me put up here for those of you and here. In the Justin's room. gonna send it to me, so I'll post it in Slack under your mastermind. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so awesome. much. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Thanks, everybody.